49 years married to him and I was doing a line with him for five or six years before we got married but uh, in between times he had to go to England and uh, different places he was a uh, um, he was a chemist assistant and he, that, his job used to take him around to different chemist shops in different places and when he came back from all the different places he always had a funny story about what happened and there was always something that happened everywhere and even if you went to the post office when he'd come home he'd have a story I could go a hundred times and I'd just come, post my letter and come home and I'd know nothing at all after it we, we, I met, we met in this store he was, he was working in, for lovely people down the street in the chemist shop his boss was Mr Keane Stack and he was a lovely, lovely person and he gave him the evening off to go to the races and they had a great time. So I landed into Listore for the races as well and went to the to, at the ballroom, the only ballroom in the town with Mick Delahunty playing. He was a he was a clan men, a band, and it was the play it was the the band of all bands like and uh, we all went wherever wherever Mick Delahunty was playing, we all we all went there. And uh, the place was crowded, crowded, crowded. So uh, um, I met him there, and we had a dance and a talk. So he later followed up on me, and uh, we hadn't phones or anything. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> all writing letters, and he wrote me a letter to say, would I be a come to me? Would he come to see me? And he did. I was working in Castle Island. That was my town, and, and I'd always meet him when he'd be travelling around like that. And we found it difficult enough to meet, <coughs> not in, not enough motor cars in those days. Mm. None of the two of us had cars, and it was then uh, he would telephone me, and I and I would go to the public phone in the street in Castle Island, and talk away to him. And there was um, there, there were, you was call them telephone operators, and this fellow was in here in the store in charge. His name was Din Din Stack. And yeah, Carol, Carol, then Carol, and uh, it was four pennies, big brown pennies to to, to telephone the store, and uh, he knew us from listening to us talking on the phone, and he would give us a lot more than three minutes. Sometimes we'd have get a half an hour, and one day I heard your man say, "Have you enough of it?" <laughs> so and we got married, and he went and bought this place, and and uh, none of us knew anything about a bar. We just ch took took a chance. We knew business, but we didn't know how to do bar work at all. But we took a chance, and we just we just succeeded because of his popularity. And all through the time he was here and busy in the bar, he would always uh, have a copy book and be writing, writing, writing. And did he ever write a poem about you? He did. <coughs> he did lots of poems about me, but. He had, I think so. I gave them to Joanna, my daughter, and uh, I think she edited the, the streets there. She put a share of me to that book. Two Eyes by John Mickey. Two eyes that beam with early dawn. Two eyes that sleep when night comes on. Two eyes that gently break on me as little waves out at sea. Over a drear and dismal shore, with silver feet and joy once more. Two eyes that teach me how to live, how to receive and how to give. How to acknowledge and to bless. How to accept defeat and shame. How from descending to ascend. How to come nearer to my end. Two eyes where I shall find always, repose from weary nights and days. Two eyes whose beauty in my heart I feel when we are far apart. Where should the tiniest tear awake, I know my very soul should break. And all things other cease to be, those two eyes mean so much to me. <laughs>